Uh, hi, everyone watching on YouTube. Welcome to week three now of the uh, docs from the After Data Science Tidyverse Docs Book Club. Last week, we looked at a primer on Perth yeah, using Jenny Bryan's tutorials. And this week, Arthur's going to take us through um, the actual documentation as it lies in the package. And we'll be looking at the map family of functions. So over to you, Arthur. Thanks so much, Jack. Let me share my screen and get going. OK. Um, just a quick check. Can you can you see my screen? Yeah. OK, brilliant. Um, so just to kind of orient us all in where what we're going to be covering for today in the doc. So if you go to kind of the per, um, sorry, let me make this a little larger, the per website, <clears throat> we're starting now on the reference material. And I had prepared materials for the, the map family. So basically everything that finds itself here. So um, this is, in, in effect, kind of an introduction to a lot of what will come hereafter. Um, so I'll go kind of slowly or try to go slowly and see if we can develop together an intuition about how things how things work. Um, the other thing worth noting here is uh, uh, I, I've definitely made pretty uh, reveal JS slides in the past. To, today at the last minute, I decided to just transform my notes from something you'd see in VS Code into uh, into slides. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Um, so we'll start off with the map family. So this is the set of functions that basically help you map. Um, and we're going to be looking at this at kind of like map variants. So you can see all of these right here. Um, the nice thing about the map family is that, in a sense, like if you develop an intuition about how one works, you understand how all of them work. So this is a little picture um, lovingly stolen from, I believe it is uh, Advanced R, a uh, chapter on um, on um, functional functionals, functional programming. Um, so basically, kind of like the idea here is uh, you have this function map. Let's just let this be like a placeholder for now, even though there actually is a function map. Um, and the idea is you'll have like a collection of things, right, represented by these these colored squares. Uh, and then some function. And the idea is that you'll be applying that function uh, to each element of your collection of things. So if you kind of think about you know, the syntax on the left, it, it, really, it really can be translated into something like the following. It's as if you're going through each block here and then applying your function f, whatever that function happens to be, to each element in this collection. So to, Apply it to element one, apply it to element two, element three, element four, et cetera. So in all of the map functions, really you're gonna be, we're gonna be taking, we've got really two, two main arguments, there are others. One is, is a collection of things. So this is gonna be a list or a vector. Um, and, and, then, and then we'll have a function. And then as I was saying, that function is going to be, is going to apply to each element of this collection, each element of this, this list or this vector. And, and we'll be returning, um, um, I guess maybe kind of importantly, we'll be returning an object to us that is um, kind of like the same size as our, our input in a certain sense. So for each, each, each call of a function, it's going to return like a, a length one, um, helps to spell correctly, um, length one um, kind of thing in this like cell. So for this, this little box right here, if we apply a function to this box, we'll, we'll, we'll get returned one thing, like a length one thing here, a length one thing here, a length one thing here, a length one thing here. Um, hopefully this maybe begins to help you develop some intuition about how map works. If it, if it doesn't, and even if it does, maybe some of the examples that follow will be helpful because I tried for each map uh, uh, function to kind of come up with a very simple, simple example that I hope um, communicates the purpose. So, so I guess what's, what's nice about the map family here is you have the same intuition, kind of functional intuition about what it, what it does, how it works. So even if it's not super clear right now, once it becomes clear, it'll be clear for every, every member of the map family um, that this is, this is how it works. 
It also has the same same interface, functional interface. So you kind of write the function a little bit like this. So you just have per here. I'm actually using the real map function, but I could use any member of the map family. And, and basically, you're going to have some some list or vector, and then some function to apply to each element of that that list or vector. The same kind of functional interface. You have some dot x, which is a a collection of things, and some dot f, which is a function that you'll apply to each each member of of X. Um, where they differ, however, is, and this is helpfully that they differ, is that each, each member of the map family returns something different for us, um, in, at least in, in the type of its output. So if, if, if you want to kind of serially apply a function to elements of, of your collection and you want to list back, map is what you're looking for, just map without other qualifications. If you want, however, a vector of a specific type, then you're going to look for these map variants. Um, if you want a logical vector uh, to be returned by your by map, you want to do map LGO for logical. Integer, map int, double, map double, character, map CHR. And then if you want We'll come to this one maybe a bit later because it's, it's 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 a lot more general case. If you somehow want to um, have like a vector of a specific type where you specify the type, maybe the type could be different than these. You can you can specify that with this this map vec. This was new to me. I'd I'd never used this before. I think it probably came with the vectors package. Um, and then the last thing is. If, if you don't want your function to return something, but instead you want it to do something. Um, so you, basically you're, you're calling a function not for what it returns you, but for what it does as a side effect, walk is what you want. Um, actually, it's not map walk, but rather walk. I need to correct that. Um, so basically you have all of these, you know, the common thing again is that all of them our map, all of them have the kind of same functional interface, but what they return or what they do for you differs depending on the kind of the flavor of map that you use. So if you want a list map, if you want a vector, you'll use one of these. And if you want a side effect, walk. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of walk through, for each one of these, I'm gonna try to walk through a little bit what appears in the documentation, have it be like my interpretation of the documentation. Um, you know, the objective of this club kind of being, or at least the, the workflow of this club being kind of to read the docs, basically. I'm going to try to come through and look at these arguments um, and then 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 explain them. Um, so x dot x uh, is going to be a list or vector. So remember here that for each one of the elements of map, we have a dot x and dot f. So similarly going to be a list or a vector. Um, and then we have dot f. And what's interesting is we can specify dot f in three, I think it's actually four, but I'll focus on three, three, three different ways. So using a named function, an anonymous function, or a, a formula. Um, so let's look at one here, uh, you know, named named function. Um, and so let's let's imagine we have kind of a um, a vector of greetings here, right? Um, hi, hola, bonjour, and harabi, oh, it's Swahili. I don't really know how to speak Swahili. Um, um, and then, and then we have, then we have our, our character map CHR. So as you remember before, map CHR will basically take our character, will take our, our, um, um, what do you call it? Take, take our, our vector here and then return us a, a character vector because that's what it, always returns us. Um, so if I want to do a named function, I could do something like this. I could pass it to x greetings. And then you'll notice dot f is I, I just pass it the name of a function. I'm not actually passing it kind of like the invocation of the function. Um, you know, that would be something like two upper open uh, open, parenthes um, uh, open parentheses x. Uh, but instead, I'm just passing it the name, right, two upper. And then this is what what it returns here. So it takes each one of these elements and then 
applies this function, which kind of transforms each one of these into upper, each one of these character elements of the character vector into uppercase. Hi, hola, bonjour, habari, uh, all are, are, are rendered uppercase. So this is one way in which you can specify functions that you apply to, um, to your vector. So with, with the, the named function. You can also write an anonymous function. So an anonymous function, um, at least this is my kind of understanding of how to define an anonymous function is that it's, it's not named, right? So it, uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm creating a function, it turns out with this, this new shorthand that's, that's available in R4.1 and above. Um, but this is, this is a function, right? It's, it's, a, it's a function of X and then it does this thing. This is the body of the function. I just take the greeting and then um, add the comma with some spaces around it and then my name. Um, and, and so that's the function. So the function importantly doesn't have a doesn't have a name, right? It's it's not called, um, you know, show greetings or something like that. It, it it's just a function that I'm I'm creating as it turns out on the fly, and it doesn't have it doesn't have a name. I can pass basically a function that's that's in this form, an anonymous function. So if you think of kind of let's toggle perhaps the the VS Code and uh, maybe make this a little larger. Um, Whoops, that didn't work out. Let's say if you had a function that would be something like, um, you know, a, yeah. So you had function so x and then there's some body to the function. So this function would be called a, right? Uh, when, 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 when I invoke it. Um, but if I have an anonymous function, in effect, it's just this right-hand part without a, without a name. So that's the anonymous anonymous function. Um, and you can see here that this, this, this function, again, kind of, uh, I'm, I'm still using the map CHR, uh, so returning, um, taking in a character vector, returning a character vector, um, and, and just doing some transformations to, to the elements of the character vector. So for each one of them, pasting, pasting this uh, together, assembling this, exp this um, string expression. Um, third way in which you can provide a formula is the, uh, or sorry, a way in which you can provide a function is a formula. So this is one I believe Jack had had showed um, maybe most frequently last week. And I think you'd, you'd kind of said that this is your, your favorite approach. And actually it's also my favorite approach um, where, where you can actually provide a, a function and you can specify its arguments as you would, as if you were writing the function um, to be kind of invoked a single time rather than being invoked, like applied to every element of a character vector. The only thing, there are only kind of two changes that you re really need to do um, when using this formula approach. Uh, number one is you need to kind of indicate to R that this is a formula. And so you're gonna write the little tilde here, which, which tells you, which tells R that this is a formula. Um, and then you need to write um, the function that you're invoking and then uh, write dot x. So dot x is, it's basically going to be our dot x right here. So in other words, you can kind of read this as, you know, um, apply this formula, uh, which would be to take each member of dot x and make it uppercase, right? Um, and, and, and as I kind of noted here, unfortunately, there's a little bit of uh, um, horizontal overflow, um, that this is probably Mo this is definitely most useful, at least in my opinion, when you're dealing with um, map, let's say map functions that allow for more than one argument. So here with, with where you have only dot X, you're kind of iterating over dot elements of dot X, you know, it's kind of clear, or it may be fairly clear what, what, where dot X goes in, in your, in your formula. But when you're dealing with, when you're map, when you're, iterating over like two, two collections of things. And that's where map two is going to come in. A collection dot X and a collection dot Y. Then, then it probably would be a lot clearer um, to you, to future you, to your colleagues, if you kind of link up arguments of, of a function um, with the um, two kind of elements of the collection that you're, you're iterating over. Um, but really, you know, at this level of just iterating over a collection of things, it's, it's sort of a, 
all, all three of these things work. As you can see, they've 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 all even though I switched up my game between between these, um, you can see that they're all doing the same thing. All are acceptable. All will pass. Uh, you just need to follow the conventions here. So named function again, just provide the name of the function. Anonymous function where you're basically writing the body of the function plus kind of the formals, everything except for the name basically, um, or you're you're providing a formula. Um, left to your choice. Yeah. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what you guys think, but I I agree. Oh. It's definitely better for like map two p map and stuff. That if you go back to the previous slide, you know number two, then when you with the new like anonymous function notation, when you use this, it's like you set dot x as greetings, but then you you're not referring to dot x anymore. Like that's just being right. read in, and you've got the slash x. For me, it like creates almost like a weird yep. mental model where it's exactly. number three. It's yeah, it's like completely transparent, like or explicit that I've got this list dot x and each part of dot x I want to do stuff on. And then this is what I where I want to do it to that stuff. Um I'm sure I'd like get over it, but I wondered what you guys think, whether this is like a bit of a clash in your mind. I, I agree with you for the same reasons. For me, like I have to make this mental mental leap between just like connecting the dots is like, okay, X is what? Is it dot X? You know, it, it'd be nicer if it were explicit somehow. Yeah, like you said, a colleague, so or someone new to code it, or like someone who inherits your code or something, if you've been using this, they're gonna look at that and be like, okay, well, dot X, and then well, what happened to it? Like, and I feel like it's obviously the the new anonymous function stuff is in r 4.1 right so it's it's not tidyverse and it's not made just with the map functions in mind and i'm sure it's better to use when you're doing like l apply and stuff instead of just writing function of x like it's a mm -hmm. nice shorthand but i think when you're mapping it's almost like i'm not gonna say it's an anti-pattern but it's like it's more confusing than than otherwise i think yeah I mean, for my own part, this is this is my favorite way of doing things. E even if it's kind of overkill, I just like that this is very. There's an explicit kind of linkage. Um, I don't even. I, I honestly don't even really care for for this approach. I I'd say ninety nine percent of the time, and this is what I'm doing when I'm when I'm using per. Yeah, I I use one if I'm like tired. If I <laughs> <laughs> I just really can't be bothered to like properly type it out, so I just yeah. use one. That being said, I feel like oftentimes I I forget I forget the tilde, so um, yeah. Yeah, I see that error message a lot, and every time I'm like, ah, yeah. Whoops. I kind of ask myself when it happens. I'm like, why am I so stupid? But <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it happens to everyone, which is nice to know. I feel like this is. Even though this has grown on me, I have to say this was also the thing that took me the longest to really kind of assimilate this uh, this formula notation. Um, it, it it ended up being kind of for me personally a little bit of a stumbling block to to to, to getting to understanding and using map because already this concept of map was a bit well. I guess I cut my programming teeth on for loops, so that was familiar for me. This 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 map thing was a level of abstraction that didn't quite register with me. And then if I had, you know, then I had this thing to struggle with too, which made it hard. I, I see Shah has his, uh, his hand raised. Um, it, maybe I missed the log clause. Is the output of this map is always a vector? No, it, it depends. It depends on um, depends on the vector or sorry the, the function that you use. So if you use map, just regular map, it's always going to be a list. So I think I, actually one thing that I didn't say, and I, I feel like the documentation says this. Uh, well, I couldn't. I didn't stumble upon it on reading it this time. Is that you know I think one motivation of of her is that at least you have let's say like type reliability in terms of what the output is. So if you do like L apply and S apply and all basically all of the applies that are in base R. Yes. Uh, some somehow you, it's not always certain that you're going to get out the type like an expected type. Um, uh, 
uh, for what's returned. Whereas with per, it, it's 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 kind of it's um it's it's kind of I think it's almost guaranteed, right? Uh, I think maybe if if it, they can't coerce it to the type that you want, that might even be a an NA. Although I I haven't looked into this, but for these, you know, like if you want a list, then you you've got to work with map. If you want a vector, then work with these, and it'll return a character vector uh, who uh, of 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 that indicated type. Um, and then the last one is is uh, shouldn't be map walk, but mm -hmm. it's a no, walk. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's not yeah. returning anything, but it's actually like iteratively doing something. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I missed yeah. the point. Okay, that's Thank okay. Um, uh, oh, I, I just before you go. Oh no, sure. someone else is. Yeah, you go, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe it's a side note, but do you know why it's dot x and dot f? Because that's always confusing me a bit. Uh, that confuses me too. Uh, I, I I don't know why. I, I'm sure there is a reason. I think we were even a little confused, like for those who are part of the, the like the deploy reading the docs for deployer last time. Is it seems like even within um, Tidyverse, there's not a huge amount of consistency about whether it's a dot name of an argument or just the name of the argument. Um, on my own part, I just kind of rely on um, tab completion <laughs> and just, you know, I'll, I'll go with the flow for, for that. But yeah, I, I don't know if, I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a reason. Do, Jack, do you happen to know yeah. if there's a reason? Yeah, it's, um, it's because like X is a very common argument. Um, oh, okay. So like, I think it's in the Tidyverse design guide or it's somewhere else. They're talking about like, especially if your function is taking ellipsis. Um, sorry, one sec. I, my colleagues are just coming. In the meantime, I think I'll try to pull up the tidyverse uh, design oh, guide. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so like when your functions take ellipsis, um, you can like, you can make it easier to avoid named argument clashes or something like that by adding a dot to your arguments of your function that takes ellipsis. Um, I think it will be in the dot, dot, dot section, maybe like you see down at the bottom data dots, details, maybe, um, it might not even have been in this book, but that, that's basically what it is. Um, because when you're, when you're passing stuff into ellipsis, they need to be named arguments. Um, and it's, it can be difficult to know where you're passing ellipsis. Not, it's not difficult to know where you're passing ellipsis to, but you might want to pass functions with ellipsis into like other functions that have some arguments. And mm -hmm. if the names are clashing, then like you'd have a bad time doing it. Um, like if map had X and you wanted to pass in an argument to another function that has X, I think that clash is bad. Um, you couldn't pass X in twice, basically, right? Even through ellipsis. Mm -hmm. um, I think I haven't explained that very well, but it's like you're much less likely to find a funk like when you're passing stuff into map, you're not likely to find another function that also takes dot x, but you are likely to find another function that takes x. Um so it's it's like it's to do with that. It makes it less likely that you'll get you'll get clashes. Yeah. Um and I think we should try to. I'll try to find the exact bit. I'll put a to-do in the club. Um, okay. But then I think as well, you raised a good point, Arthur, about the formula thing being another abstraction that you have to get your head around. Um, because when you're like, especially if you're teaching something, like you want to implement or introduce, if you can, like one idea at a time. Um, and if you, it's like if you're debugging, you want to debug one thing at a time. If you introduce like two things at a time, so here's map, these are lists, and you're iterating and like, oh, here's this formula stuff as well. Um, then for a person, it's kind of like debugging two things at the same time, right? It's like trying to get two ideas. So I think this way is definitely better once you get used to map, but maybe like, I think there's a point to what you said is like, if you're seeing map for the first time, you might want to stay away from this because you'll run into problems with the formula too. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh yeah, so I guess now I'm moving from 
yeah, let's see, moving from, okay, so we've talked, we've talked about dot X, we've talked about dot F. And so the other argument that, that we have in, in, in the docs, so again, I'm kind of going through this, you know, dot X, dot F. Um, I didn't cover this because I didn't quite understand it. Um, and then there's the dots. Um, so the dots are useful in the sense that um, when you're when you're kind of specifying your function that did, that you're going to apply to each element of of your your collection, um, you could you could kind of fully specify that function um, in kind of the formula notation. I'll come back and actually write this, or 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 instead you could say look. I know that as I as I iteratively apply this function to different elements, that you know there's only one thing that's going to change between iterations, and that's the, the element of x that we're applying on. And then, but there's like a fixed set of parameters that I always want to apply when I invoke that function. So you can do so um, in, in this in this kind of syntax here. So again, I've got kind of the same setup with the greetings. Um, here I'm using string R's to upper simply because it has an additional argument that I can specify. So I can say, you know, the function I want to apply is string R, uh, you know, to upper, which is going to make everything uppercase. And then it turns out that string R has an additional, sorry, this function has an additional argument. There's a default value for it that, that basically when you're making things uppercase that the locale kind of uh, like the cultural settings that you're using are going to be in English. Um, but here I'm just setting it to, uh, actually they, they kind of do the same in the docs to, to Turkish, uh, uh, T, TR. Um, and this base, this basically is going to be one of the, one of the, one of the arguments that's going to be passed to this function. And it's kind of interesting here because in Turkish, when you make an I uppercase and it has like, um, uh, like a long I sound instead of like, uh, then it's going to have this little dot on the top. So here you can see it's taken a lower, so this would be high with lower case i, and then it, it's transformed it to uppercase in a certain way uh, for these for these these eyes. Um, so that's the way in which you can kind of pass this this uh, this this additional argument to each element of the function. So kind of unpack it, which probably I should have done from the very start. Is you know, so if you have, um, um, I guess our our greetings. Maybe let me just come to. Let me see where I've got our greetings. Yeah, okay, so I guess we'll just use this computed cell here. Um, so if I wanted to um, do, do like string, string R, uh, str to upper. Um, so here I've got, um, there are kind of two arguments that, that I, could, I, could, I could have here, you know, a string that I, I want to do something with in the locale. So if I were to basically take, I could do high, for example, and then locale equals uh, Turkish, um, then um, then then that would that would do it for the single case. Um, I could equally write. So here we've got our high, kind of Turkish uppercase I. Um, I could do I could do this in kind of a map setting. So this is for the single case. I could do it uh, for um, this this case and say dot f or say dot dot uh, dot x equals greetings and dot f equals uh, actually let's here I am I'm forgetting what I um, let's do it the formula notation string r str uh, to upper, and then I could do dot x, and then locale equals Turkish. Did I write that the right way? Well, anyway, this should work. Uh, let's forget that it didn't show up the right way in the console, but this would kind of be a way in which you could apply, you could apply it uh, to each element, or kind of equivalently, 
Um, and this is what we what we did um, just now is let's say I just do this this function right here. Um, oops. And these are basically kind of the dots that I'm passing to this to this function. I don't know if that's any clearer. Or considerably yeah, more confusing. Okay, cool. Um, and I think you didn't run line seventy-one, um, so it didn't know that reading. System ah, there we are. Thank you. Yep. Sure. I think that's exactly what I did wrong. Yep. Okay. Brilliant. So this should also this should also yield the same results. If we have time, I'll I'll, I'll talk about maybe like a little a little bug. That, that I might have discovered as I was preparing the slides. Um, so this is kind of for the dots. Um, if you wanted to pass the pass the dots. Um, so other thing, um, let me actually come back to this, uh, and I'll make this a little bigger. Um, so another argument that you could have, and this is only for. Um, some types of uh, some types of, of functions that you have this dot p type. So this is in effect like a prototype object that gives you like the class of the output that you that you want. Um, to kind of see where this might be useful, consider the following. So let's just have some numbers here. I'm going to make it a list because I want to have a collection of things where I have each element being a different a different type. So here I've forced this. Uh, to be an integer with the L, and then these are going to be doubles. So I have this collection of numbers called some numbers. Um, and um, and then what I could what I could do is I could you know kind of check the check the output type uh, of these and then I could see basically what I've defined as uh, is what what I what I find. So the first element of my list is an integer. the second second and third elements are are um, are doubles, right? Um, as 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 expected, um, and but maybe maybe I might want to iterate over things and force force there to be storage of of integer types. So I would want this to be I would want this to be I would want my result to be a vector of integers. So one way I'm not saying this is the best way, but one way that one could achieve this is through this map dot underscore vec so for, for vector so you could take this this collection of things so this is our list of some numbers i'm applying an anonymous function just taking the the number and then multiplying it by two nothing fancy and then um to ensure that the output is of the type that i expect i'm going to uh basically write some expression here and in this one i'm i I'll, maybe I'll stop after after the sentence and, and uh, or the next one and and uh, get some feedback from you guys. But I, I had some really, I've seen this mentioned several times in the tidyverse. Um, uh, for example, tidy R. I want to say I'd seen it in dplyr somewhere, but I'm not really seeing any good usage examples. And I just happened to stumble upon one uh, in in a, uh, our community, our studio community uh, post. But here I can basically say like I want. I want uh, to kind of like recast my the result of this the result of this function to integer type. So let's do that. I'll get this kind of collection right here. It's new numbers, and then I can check that each each one of these is the type that I expect. And then and indeed that's that's the that's the case. So I've got you know the first element is an integer sector, second element. Is an integer. Third element is also an integer because I've kind of forcibly recast um, these to uh, to integer integer type. I could have done the same thing with double or or, or other things, but this is what, what I've done. I guess maybe I'll, I'll stop for you and ask you guys a question. Is like, does, does anywhere anyone aware of any good documentation for how to use this this kind of construct or or, or any good usage examples? I can honestly say I've never used it. 
Okay. Um, I can see like why it would be useful in this case, but I've never, never had a situation where I felt like this is the solution. I think yep. Shaw covered it in Deep Liar. Oh. I think it was when we did those docs. Maybe not though. Might be putting, <laughs> might be saying Shah's done stuff that he hasn't. <laughs> I mean, this might also appear, I feel like I've stumbled upon this idea. This might might also appear, whoops, sorry, in um, vectors, the vectors package. Um, oh, wait, that's not it. Um, there we go. The vectors package where you could somehow, have I mistyped again? I think they needed to show you serial package. <laughs> It's in your, when you type vectors, it's linking you to serial. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to go towards. There we are. I guess I just haven't visited this. And, um, I feel like, yeah, so you got this, this prototype idea here. And I, I, it doesn't see it explicitly in the documentation, but I think you could kind of, if, if, you, if you had your own, if you had different, if you had different classes, so let's say like S3 type classes, um, that you could, you could kind of have a map underscore vec that it's kind of like a map flavor that could apply to that. So like, let's imagine you have um, a vector of date times, right? Then then maybe you would want to ensure that your operation kind of yields a vector of date times. And so this this could be used used for 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 that. Or if you have more exotic versions of vectors that I think are made possible with the vectors the vectors package. Um, remember that there's some talk about uh, I think if at the, at our studio conference a few years back. Um, I think it was some some historian who was looking at uh, I think non base ten counting systems or accounting systems in the past. And so he'd created like special classes of vectors to uh, process this kind of information. So if you have something like that, then maybe you could, you could, you could use this. Um, anyway, I, for me, it's just kind of an intellectual curiosity. I don't have any, but I guess like, like you said, Jack, I, I've never found, well, actually I should say this is new to me. So I, I, I didn't know until I was looking through these docs that this existed. Um, and even now that I know it exists, I don't know that I would use it. Um, but nice to know it's there. Um, um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, um, and I, I, I kind of looked into in the past is, let me go back to this setting, um, is, is the, is the, is the, is the progress bar. Um, so with, with, um, with the, the documentation you can see for each one of these map families, you have this, this, this progress argument that's by default set to false, right? Um, but it could be interesting if you're doing some, some operation that is time consuming and you want to message to yourself or to others that work is underway and it's uh, kind of progressed to a certain level. Um, PER provides you access to kind of a, 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 progress, a progress bar. Um, I think it's an inbuilt progress bar, but I believe they're wrapping another package called progress where you can actually make your own progress bars. You know, you could have a certain number of hearts that are shown until it reaches 100%, et cetera. Um, but just to kind of provide the intuitions, like let's imagine we have some operation that, that's going to be slow. So it's going to show the values we pass to it and then you know, sys sleep for three seconds. Um, and here's our vector over which we're, 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 we're iterating. And so we'll just kind of walk. And so this is actually the use case of walk. So walk here, we're not really going to return anything. There's no return value. In fact, we're just showing in the console the value that's being passed to it and we're, and we're waiting. Um, so here you can kind of see how this, how this looks in, in, in real life. You see the number and then there's a little progress bar that appears here in the console. I think it'd probably look the same and same or similar in our studio. But you can kind of get a sense of how that that progress bar might might work, and how maybe it might be useful for for you if you're developing kind of um, 
user user facing functions where in, indications of progress would be would be welcome. Um, this progress thing was what like like my one of my favorite updates ever. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you're doing something that's like compute intensive, mm -hmm. like I don't know topic modeling or like some like big regex like cleaning steps and stuff over like big data um but like bit not big as in like doesn't fit in memory but let's say like millions of documents or something like it might take 20 minutes for the function to run and like if you're handing over that script to someone else after like five minutes they'll start like pressing escape or whatever <laughs> um but if you've got this or they can just see like and, this, and it has like the eta it's like this is going to take yep. me 17 minutes so they can just go off and do do stuff i really hope they get it into fur so like future map and stuff because at the moment it, it's i think it is there actually i don't know if it's in fur but there's a i, I, think I was there, looking at this myself i think work. it's in the future future package um yeah i think like there is an argument in the function in the fur like future underscore map um or maybe there's not but like it doesn't it it doesn't work with fur like it does with per um, sorry it, 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 it's progress r i think it, it, that provides a, a like an inter a general interface for kind of progress bars that work both in parallelized and non-parallelized settings yeah you have to wrap it in like you have to tell it how it should measure your um progress success and stuff right like your progress and it can get I, like it can get quite low level but say okay. if you're um if you're doing something with eight cores and they're all going to complete at the same time because you've set up the like the parallel processing correctly or whatever and they're going to run in parallel each on a different core and they're going to take the same time then it's going to stop your progress bar would go from zero to eight because it wouldn't complete any of the actions um, before like all of them are completed. Whereas the cool thing about per is because it's sequential. It's like if mm. you're doing something big, or even if it's on chunks, it's like when the first chunk finishes, it then calculates for you how long everything will take. Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's seamless with per, and it's just like it doesn't quite work as well with fur. Um, so when I say fur, I mean like the future underscore map functions yep. it's not like doing stuff in the future package um i might be behind on this though and it might now be just as easy but last time i looked it, it wasn't as as easy like it's probably worth checking if they even have the um the arguments i mean a quick pass it's available how easy it is how well it works not clear yeah because I, I do this um what was this this uh so this this uh club per once we've done a run through of most of per I think we should do a couple of sessions just on fur because it's it's nearly always just like the same syntax it's just mm, yep yeah it does it it does it differently um yeah I might read this actually in my spare time. Yeah, I'd wanted something like this to uh, for for something recent, but uh, couldn't quite wrap my head around it in the limited time I had. Uh, yeah, this this reminds me of the epochs in TensorFlow. We get same kind of arrow bar, if you remember, if someone has used it. Yeah, if you use TQDM, like TQDM, so easy though. Like you can import that package and then do yeah with tqdm and it will do stuff for you really easy i found when i was trying to get this up it wasn't as easy it might now be easier um cool um um i guess the lap last one which i won't really go into very much because i i I guess both because I didn't have much time to work on it. And secondly, I think it may not be so complicated as I first thought it was, is as mapper. So if we kind of look again, if we kind of come back to the reference materials here, we have a map family. So we've covered all of these in some level of detail. Um, I guess I should say like maybe for walk one, one additional example would be um, 
or one example could be, let, let's say you're just iterating through um, like opening files, let's see a CSV file doing some transformation and then saving something, right? So you're not getting a return in our sense, but you're, you're, you're doing something. That might be another case for, for walk or creating, you know, N number of GG plots where you, you're, you're kind of in your iterations, your, your parameters may, may, may differ across each iteration, right? Um, uh, so coming to mapper, um, this, this one, I kind of started looking at this and I was thinking, wow, this is some pretty Spartan documentation. Um, it just says, <laughs> it's really funny. It says, you know, uh, enthusiastically as mapper is the powerhouse behind the varied function specifications that most per functions allow. Um, and then it goes on to provide you virtually no documentation. <laughs> um, and, and, but I, in the end, this, I'll kind of share with you what I think, what is my understanding by way of a nice, blog post from Colin Fay. Um, and we'll see if others have anything to add. Because I, I have to say, personally, I've not used as mapper any. I think when I was learning per, I was, I want to say the data camp uh, class on this was actually done by Colin Fay. And he, he he showed as mapper. And I think I understood it only well enough to pass that data camp uh, uh, exercise. And I, I've, I've promptly not used it since. My understanding of as mapper is, is kind of as follows. So if if you think about like any of the map functions, um, you know, like as as here, um, you know, you have some collection of things and then you have a function right here. And we've, we've seen before that you can write the functions in, in various various ways. So this is one, um, sorry, let me make this a little larger, um, that, that uses the formula notation. Um, and in the end, I think that her essentially kind of like takes this, captures this, and says that it's going to be a like functionizes it, makes it into a function via as as mapper. Um, so in 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 a sense, like if you have this function, let's say uh, x plus y right here. So this is let's forget that this is as mapper. Let's just imagine this is an you know map, and you have some some thing and then some, um, uh, you know, so some collection over which you're iterating, and then this would be the function. Of, this is map two actually, but you know, as mapper, it's a formula. And, and basically, what 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 it what it does is it, it basically you can have a named function that's a mapper function that does this 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 thing right here. So in a sense, like as mapper, my my very crude crude understanding of as mapper is that it, it basically is a way in which you can kind of write um, this function, you know, addition right here, it'll do the thing, and then you can kind of iterate, iterate over over certain things. So you have this addition thing, which adds an element from from x and an element from y. So you know, one plus four is five, two plus five is seven, three plus six is nine, and then you get this as as, as a result. Rather than having to write um, this this expression here, so in effect, you can kind of write your own your own function as as a as a as a as a mapper, um, and I, I guess that's that's kind of it for for as mapper. At least from my very crude crude understanding of as mapper. I mean, so I guess then kind of question to the group is: Is there anything? Have others used it? And is there anything I'm missing here? I see a message in the chat, sorry. I mean, if no one's gonna, I'll, I'll say, I, I haven't used it and I did see it. And then I was kind of like you, I just read the docs and was like, okay, this is like, Per's calling this under the hood and it makes sure that the stuff I put in here can be mapped. And that was like, as far as I got. And then I was just like, okay, I'll just move on. But I'm guessing that there's some cool details that would come out later, right? Like, or some reason why it's really important, but I don't know it yet. Yeah, nor, 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 nor I. Cool. 
So, I mean, for my own part, I feel like in lieu of writing a mapper, I would just write a function, write my own bespoke function and then call that function. So there I could kind of verify it works for the like sing a single case and then hope then that it works for over all the elements that I'm passing to it. Yeah. So if you were to do that, is it is the only it's the difference just that you would have to make your function take dot x and dot y or do stuff with dot x and dot y? Like I just what's the difference or like is there a difference when you use as mapper like what do you get above and beyond just creating like your own function i'm honestly not sure i'm sure there's something i'm missing here Yeah, I think that's, um, I'll put this as a to-do and we'll start next week perhaps with a little bit more on AdMapper if whoever's presenting finds it interesting. Is this the kind of thing, like it obviously exists for a reason. And if it's only the, it turns your formula into a function for you for per. Then I guess if you're not building map, right? Like you're not actually making the map function yourself. I don't know how much use it's going to be for, for the rest of us. Yeah. The pluck thing looks interesting, but I'll be honest, I haven't fully read that blog. Yeah, post. likewise. That was that that piqued my curiosity too, but I didn't really dive into it. Yeah, and I guess that's 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 it. That's it for me. Um No. Hopefully for those that were new to her, you've gotten some, hopefully maybe like some intuition about how it works. Cause re really it's kind of more of the same for map, map, uh, map two and P map. Um, yeah. Would you have some more 